All right, guys, who's ready for some Netflix and chill? <laughs> I literally took 10 minutes before this recording to come up with that joke, so you better appreciate it. Welcome to Cold Hearts. This game is made by some of the devs that made Witcher 3, I believe. Uh, a, a, a small handful of them, I presume, because this is a very tiny alpha version of the game. And uh, I'm not going to spoil what it entails, but let's just say... That, um, you see that Japanese little letter at the end there? The one that looks kind of like a winky face? That's very representative of this game. Cold Hearts. Let's press new game. Here we go. You guys are in for a shock. I think. Here we go. Cold Hearts. Prologue. Oh, it's beautiful! Have you ever felt like you don't belong? Unable to find your place in this strange world? Be bear with it, guys. Bear with it. Surrounded by people you don't connect with. Doing daily tasks that don't seem to fit you. Hell, even picking groceries and clothes based on what you think a decent human being would choose. Living the life an entirely different person with nowhere to change it. This is my reality since father died. I wasn't ready for this. I wasn't ready for anything, except a night spent lying on the couch, with a bag of chips, watching TV, or week-long video game grinding sessions. Is this- is this person me? We only had each other, and father made sure I had both my wallet and fridge full. He owned a shop with household appliances, and I- well, I helped him out a few times, but I wasn't really interested in having a job. This guy is definitely me. I wasn't paying attention when he tried to teach me how to pay taxes, or how to run your own company. I didn't even notice when he became sick. Suddenly, everything changed. I felt like I was being slapped in the face with reality. Sadness, grief, guilt. I went through all these phases, trying to accept the fact that he's gone forever. But I never really did. Maybe that's why I tried to live his life now. I took over his company. Every morning I wake up, eat complete breakfast and go to work. Selling washing machines, fridges, toasters, everything. Just as it should be. Except for those sleepless nights. Man, this is quite dramatic and this voice is absolutely killing my throat, but you know what? It's fine. I also sound rather camp, so no different from usual, I guess. When I try to sleep, dark thoughts haunt me. Showing me the worst moments of my life. Revealing endless anxieties and my deepest fears. I tried counting sheep, but the only thing that really helps is a quick trip to the kitchen to grab something sweet from my fridge. Now, have you noticed? It, it, it says a lot about fridges. And so we live together in harmony and balance of a regular schedule, me and my fridge. Every night I come to visit her to ease my worried mind, and then I go back to sleep, except for one night. The night when my fridge came to me. There's error. Uh huh? That's my- <laughs> That's my confused voice. This is like an anime or something, so I'm like, uh Who? Who's there? Uh. Silence! I'm sure I- Oh, wait. No, that is- I thought that was the other person's voice. <laughs> it's actually my inner thought. I don't actually sound like, Silence! I'm sure I heard a weird- No, that's- that's not my voice. Silence. I'm sure I heard a weird metallic stomping that woke me from another restless dream. My vision is still blurry after such a sudden awakening. I rub my eyes, quickly to find the source of the sound. Because everyone knows that rubbing your eyes furiously helps you indicate where sound is coming from much easier. And suddenly, I see it. Oh, hot mama! It's... it's just me. I'm not sure what's more bizarre. A fridge standing right in front of my bed, or hearing a female voice in my bedroom. Act sympathetic, act cautious. Let's act cautious, you know. It's not every day that a fridge comes and, you know, talks to you. Who are you? What are you doing in my house? Stop hiding behind the fridge, thief! To my surprise, the reply I get is sobbing in the same high-pitched female voice I heard before. Oh dear, am I dealing with a psycho here? Hey, just tell me what you want and let's get this over with. I... I just wanted to help. Make it easier for Master tonight. Here. Suddenly, the doors of the fridge open, casting a beaming light, uh, a beam of light, driving away the shadows of my bedroom. Thrown by an unknown power, a bar of chocolate hits my head and lands in my lap. As if that's not enough, the fridge turns around and, to the dread sound of metallic stomping, it leaves the room. 
Oh my god. Well, she's dainty, isn't she? She's a petite girl. I can't take this anymore. I sink back into the pillars, hoping to wake up from this dream. It's a pretty messed up dream, isn't it? <laughs> that was a weird dream. I hope I'm not losing my mind. I scratch my head and rub my face, trying to wake up. I feel something sticky on my hand. Ugh! And as soon as I open my eyes, I realize something's wrong. My bed sheets are covered in something brown. Ugh! And so my hands, my face, and pajama. Your face? I jump out of bed and quickly remove my clothes in a panic. I know stress can have many effects. I heard about similar disturbances in sleep, but this? Wait, is it the chocolate? It's the chocolate, isn't it? If that wasn't bad enough, there's something stick on my bottom of my foot. I raise my leg, hoping to, okay, hoping to try and stay balanced and catch my foot. It's a dirty chocolate wrapping. Thank God. I don't know what I'd do if that was something else. I must have eaten it subconsciously while dreaming about that damn fridge. I know about sleepwalking, but sleep eating? Does that even exist? What a mess. So should I clean the room and put the sheets in the washing machine or ignore the mess and go to the kitchen like some sort of goddamn Neanderthal? Let's clean the room. God damn. Hoping that chocolate won't leave a stain, I get the washing machine going as quickly as possible. So, I hope nothing in here plans to talk to me today. I smile and blush, immediately ashamed of being amused by my own jerk. I walk out quickly, try not to overthink the fact that the washing machine sounded angry. Living without my father taught me to be frugal. Sure, I get this apartment and I just shop for free, but I have no idea about running a business. Better safe than sorry. After discovering the melted leftover chocolate still in its wrapping, I decided to put it straight into my fridge. I can always eat it at midnight, right? Yeah, but it's been stuck to your, your foot, dude. Christ. Stepping through the kitchen door, I hesitate. I'm not sure if I'm ready for another interaction with my fridge. I realize how pathetic I must look like. Afraid of my own household appliances. <laughs> you do look kind of silly. So, are you in the mood to talk today? What? Is this the same fridge? I tried to make that sound like a jerk, but my voice got rather serious unintentionally. Hey, uh, I just wanted to put this inside of you. Will you let me do it? I'll be gentle. I realize how that sounds and immediately torn between endless shame and a burst of laughter. My fern, uh, my fern, my face turns red and sweaty. My fern, of course, please do it. That same sweet feminine voice coming out of the fridge. I'm mad. I must be mad. Run away. Con Let's continue the conversation. I take a deep breath and decide to completely abandon finding any logical explanation for what's happening. Is it true? Can you talk? Is my own fridge talking to me? I hear a warm, short sound similar to a quiet giggle. <laughs> it's difficult to call that talking, but at least my dear owner can understand me. Ooh. Your dear? That's you. I try to serve you well. I hope I just... I just hope you see that. <laughs> this is not very PG. Of course I do, but please don't refer to me as an earner. So far, you're creeping me out instead of helping. This is too much I'm out of here. Uh, you are creeping me out a little. <gasps> Please! I didn't want to make you angry. Please forgive me. I will never do it again. You don't have to be afraid. I'll do my best to take care of you. I promise. Her, vo her voice sounded so desperate. Like her whole existence depends on me. Her emotions feel real, but she's not a real person. Is she? Do you have a name? No reply. Suddenly, the silence is broken by a loud buzzing coming from the fridge. The same sound I sometimes hear at night, reminding me to buy a new model to avoid the drone. Uh, an Anzu. Anzu? She said it quietly, in a turn resembling more of a question than an answer. As far as, my know, uh, as, far as I know, my father didn't talk with fridges. Uh, so she hasn't been called by her real name for at least ten years. Maybe her original owner didn't, uh, did that? I started to create all these theories in my head. Dude, I think your fridge just has a crush on you. I think that's the only theory you need to be focusing on. No, wait. It's still a talking fridge. Stop rationalizing it. So, Anzu. Uh, am I insane? Are you really just a fridge? Why didn't you talk before? Didn't I? Maybe it was you who couldn't hear me. Her voice sounds like her... Her voice sounds like she smiles, but there's some kind of mystery hidden beneath. Ooh, a woman of many qualities. To be honest, I'm not sure. I can't remember myself talking before. What would I talk about anyway? The important thing is, we can communicate right now. Oh wait, no. God. 
<laughs> she suddenly has a real manly macho voice. Not like I'm blowing my own trumpet or anything. The important thing is, we can communicate right now. It's pleasing to be able to talk, isn't it? It certainly is. Who knows? Maybe we can be friends. Stop trying to bond with me. You're my fridge. You should stall my food, not talk with me. F friends? She said that in a deeply questioning turn, like wondering if such word even exists. I can't help but giggle. Either she's toying with me, or she's such a weirdo. I slapped my forehead. <laughs> I actually did it in real life. You ready? Here we go. Ah, jeez. God damn. I think I've given myself a concussion. <laughs> I slapped my forehead, realizing how I treat her as a real person after a few minutes of conversation. Am I so lonely? Uh, so lonely? So lonely? Really? With a deep sigh, I let myself relax. Yeah, friends, uh, talking with each other every time I prepare breakfast, maybe share recipes if you know any. I smile to myself, shake my head and continue. Even if you're just a projection of my insane brain, we can learn how to live with each other. You can teach me how to interact with, pe with real people, and I'll buy you some nice magnets? My smile slowly fades away as she doesn't reply. Doesn't she like magnets? I'm... I am real. She screams so loudly, I'm sure my hearing will never be the same. I start wondering what my neighbors, my neighbors think right now. Her voice was angry, also a little bit childish, making me wonder if she is, if, if her soul is the soul of a grown-up. But I don't think I've ever had a friend. I don't know what it's like. Here we go. It's not so bad. I didn't screw up entirely, right? Don't worry. I can, I can teach you. I mean, we can learn from each other. I'm sure it will be. Buzzing. That's really, uh, that really loud, really annoying buzzing my fridge lights out every night when I'm trying to sleep. Now it's there again. I can't think. I can't hear my... Can you please stop that? Nothing. No reply. I guess the conversation is over. What did I screw up this time? Well, I'll try again another time. I feel a little bit dizzy as I leave the kitchen and lean against the wall breathing heavily, trying to pull myself together. I could keep telling myself that it's stress, that all those nights spent at work have finally caught up with me and at the cause of these strange hallucinations. But that voice was real. Deep inside, I know it well, but I try to not let these thoughts take over my mind. I feel like I'm hanging on the edge of sanity in desperate need of distraction to clear my head. I should probably get to work or at least decide what to do today. Since the day my father passed away, I've been running his own business all by myself. It's a huge responsibility, but at least I'm the master of my own time. It's up to me if the shop is open or not. Just like father. I'm not a fan of this whole weekend idea. Why waste the day when you can be productive instead? Of course I'm not a robot. I sometimes take a day off to visit my friend Kazuya and play games just like we did in the good old days. It's been a while since I've been around there. To be honest, I can't remember the last day I even took a break. That explains this whole fridge hallucination thing, I guess. Fortunately, I don't have time to work and visit Kasuya at the same time. Being the only person running such a huge shop full of household appliances, I have to stay late to do all the paperwork and make sure everything is all right. There's barely any time left to record, oh, to record? God, I'm getting all wrapped up in this whole YouTube thing. To read a book, or even clean the house. How did my ma father manage to do this all by himself? Why didn't I help him? <sighs> it's time to decide what to do. Going to work would be the most responsible idea. That's what my father would do. I'm not feeling well right now, but there is no more sick leave in my life. I have to grow up and face it! Growing up. That also means not keeping everything to myself and learning when to ask for help. Kazuya, my best friend, has always been there for me, so I should maybe tell him about what happened, although I'm not sure how he would react to the fact that I can hear fridges. Maybe he could actually help me? Sometimes I prefer to just stay at home and relax, but I'm not sure if I want to risk another conversation with my fridge. Not now. I'll give myself a day or two to find out if I'm really insane before I start thinking about professional help. Let's not overreact yet. Let's visit Kazuya. In fact, I'm pretty sure we're gonna wrap it up there, so we'll read this last dialogue box. I was sure I could cope with everything myself. Apparently this was a mistake. It's time to confide in a friend. The best one there is, Kazuya!
Well, he's the only friend I've ever had. Well, the only one that's not French. However, this could be an even bigger mistake. Huh? Is my brain switching to autopilot? I'm not really sure how, but I have a phone in my hand and a familiar voice comes from it. Oh, it's Kazuya. Oh, hi. Sup? Kazuya, it's me. We're going to find out what the rest of this phone call entails. I'm going to save the game. There we go. Um, Cold Hearts. <laughs> I bet you weren't expecting that. Um, although I've probably spoiled it in the title or something. If you guys enjoyed it, then please let me know with a like and a comment and subscribe if you want to stick around. Um, and let me know if you want to play more of this game. Right now, it's quite bizarre, and I think we can have a fun time with this game. I'm not sure how long it is, how long this alpha demo build goes on for, but, um, yeah, if you guys want to see more, please let me know, and I'm sure we can arrange something. I'll just have to check up with my fridge secretary first. <laughs> Guido, what did you think of that uh, game today, buddy? Yeah, well, it was a little bit bizarre, but you're a little bit bizarre. Um, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Steve. That has been Cold Hearts. Checkpoint complete.